One of the speakers are supposed to speak on uh, discipleship and world evangelization, but he could not come. So I stand here as a pinch hitter. <laughs> but uh, I was thinking about uh, the speaking on uh, discipleship and world evangelization on behalf of him, but I uh, wanted to uh, speak uh, the word uh, the God placed uh, in my heart. So this morning I like to speak on uh, love your neighbor as yourself. Galatians chapter 5 verse 14 reads, for the entire law is summed up in a single command, love your neighbor as yourself. We talk about the great commission and great uh, commandment, and people are sometimes uh, confused uh, or uh, do not know the distinction, the difference between the great commission and great commandment. Uh, what is the great commission? As we know, Matthew chapter 28, uh, 18 uh, through 20, Jesus said, then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the Great Commission. So churches on earth, regardless of the cost, we have to implement the Lord's great commission. People are committed uh, to uh, implement the Lord's great commission. They work hard. They have a vision, passion, commitment, and even they sacrifice themselves you know, to implement the Lord's Great Commission. But, as I have observed, I, w I have been serving the Lord as cross-cultural missionary for tw 35 years. But what I have noticed, missionaries are working hard, planting churches, building sanctuaries, setting up educational institutions, seminaries, they sacrifice themselves but I did not see that they actually practice the great commandment. Even between missionaries, instead of loving one another, uh, they compare themselves with others and the ministry, their ministries with the other persons' ministries, they become a rival. They do not love one another. They compare. They hate. Even they buy lands and build the sanctuaries and they set up uh, institutions, but the loving the nationals, the people they serve, it was not well done. So this morning I like to speak on love your neighbor as yourself and I uh, introduce the, the Lord's great commission. Then what's the great commandment? Matthew chapter 22 verses 36 to 40. A teacher of law came to Jesus and said, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love your Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And second is like it. Like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. People always like 
the first. So, even if love to God and love to our neighbor are the same, but people, they just love the Lord. They give time to the Lord, and they give uh, the money to the Lord. Even they uh, give their efforts to practice the love to, to the Lord our God. But do not spend time, resources, or energy to practice love to the neighbor. But the love to God and the love to neighbor cannot be separated. According to 1 John chapter 4, verses 21 and 22, John says, if anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God. We are mistaken to believe we can love God while we hate our brothers. But John says, for anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he, he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love his brother. Love to our neighbor is royal law. James chapter 2 verse 8 reads, if you really keep the royal law found in the scripture, love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing right. Royal law is love your neighbor as yourself. There is no mention about the love to God here. In Matthew chapter 22, yes, he said, love your God and love your neighbor. But here, the word love your God is not here. And the love to our neighbor is a summary of the entire law. Galatians chapter 5, verse 14, Paul says the entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Paul says the entire law, the whole Bible is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Again, we cannot see in this passage love to God. The love to God is omitted here. Then is it okay for us not to love God? Of course, without experience God's love, without the loving God first, we cannot truly love our neighbor. It's there. But so many people are mistaken believe we may not love our neighbor, we may not practice love to our neighbor, if we love our God. But the entire law, all the scriptures are summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. While we do our best to implement the Lord's great commission, We can forget our love to our neighbor. We can neglect, we may be neglect in practicing our love to our neighbor. Isaiah chapter 58, verses 6 through 10, Isaiah wrote, Is not this the king of a uh, kind of fasting I have chosen? to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke. Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with the shelter when you see the naked to clothe him and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing 
will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and he will say, Here am I. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with a pointing finger and malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like noonday. Time to time, we fast. We pray. But in our actual life, we do not practice our love. But true fasting is loving our neighbor in practice. Luke chapter 10, verses 27 to 37, tell us about parable of the Good Samaritan. You know, in the, the parable of Good Samaritan, we see priest. Who are priests? Priest is like uh, ordained ministers who perform the religious duties in the church. And the Leviticus, uh, they praise leaders, you know, who praise the Lord in the sanctuary. They finished their duty and they were going back to their home. In Jericho, Scala said there were residences, you know, housings of, uh, for uh, priests and Levites. They already performed, they finished their, their job in the temple. On their way home, they met a man who met uh, robbers and were beaten and almost died. They saw. But they saw, but they just escaped. They just left without showing their love. But the Samaritan, in his busy schedule, he was traveling. He was going to the airport <laughs> to take an airplane. It's a matter of time for him, the traveler. But when he saw the man who were beaten, who were dying, he had mercy on him. He approached to him. Spent time, resources, energy to take care of him. And he took him to an inn. And the whole night he took care of him. He had to leave. So he did not say, okay, I did my job. I'm sorry, I have to go. He did not say that. He told the innkeeper, please take care of this man. When I come back, I'll reimburse. I'll pay, no matter how much it costs. We, aren't we, ministers, missionaries, like this priest and Levite. We are supposed to tell the people that love your God, love your neighbor. But in our life and ministry, do we really practice love to our neighbor? I myself, I'm a Christian since 1965. I'm an ordained minister for 40 years, commissioned a missionary for 35 years. But I always love the Lord. You know, to show my love, because my love to the Lord, I, every day, 4.45, I get up, take shower, go to my church, and spend a couple of hours there in my church praying to God, sharing the word of God, listening to God. 
Even I gave, gave my, gave my, I've given my tithes to the Lord. I tried my best to love the Lord more and more. But some years ago, I read this scripture portion, Galatians chapter 5, verse 14. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. So I just thought of myself. How much time do I spend to love my neighbor? How much do I spend to show my love? How do I do my best? And then I saw myself. When I see people's need, I ask other people. When one of uh, the Filipino uh, the pastors died, he served as general secretary of the Presbyterian Church of the Philippines. He served as uh, head chairman of the board of trustees. He died because of cancer. His family was left without any help. The widow and then his children were living in parsonage of the church. The pastor, this is pastor served as senior pastor. The family did not have a place to go. Uh, the missionary in charge and you know new pastor asked them, please leave without providing any shelter. Knowing the fact, I prayed for the family, but one of uh, my friends uh, who is a uh, successful businessman, whenever I visited the uh, mission field, his wife gave me about $2,000. Dr. Park, when you go to mission field, you may find missionaries who are in difficult situation. I do not know, but you will know. So why don't you help them? So always, whenever I went to mission field, she gave about $2,000. So I try to find who is in need, who is in need. And then, but this time again, she gave me $2,000. So I said, Oh, Mrs. Chang, thank you so much. I've been praying for a family who lost husband and father. Huh? She asked me, what are you talking about? The family has to leave uh, the parsonage, but nowhere to go. Then the lady asked me, then please go to the Philippines and see how much does it cost to buy a home. I was so excited, and then I tried to find a home, and then just near De La Salle University of uh, Das Marinas, I found a home, and then I made a report to her. This amount she needs. Then she said, okay, I'll buy a home for her. So we bought a home for her. She is there now. But she asked me, I, think, I don't think a home is enough. They need a job. They need the children's education. Why don't you uh, just uh, see how much does it cost to uh, educate their children? So I came back and then I researched it. Oh, this amount uh, it cost. But the Lord spoke to me. Tim, you always ask other people to help the person in need. What do you do? As a matter of fact, the, the deceased pastor was my convert. I was the one who witnessed to him, and he became a Christian. And he was my student. He received ordination in our denomination here. And he became general secretary. And he became the chairman of the board. Sacrificially, he served the Lord. But when he was dying, missionaries around him did not help him much. Even others, the moderator of the, gen moderator of the Christian 
General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of the Philippines died while he was uh, in the, his office. But I didn't see people just help him financially. They did not take care of him enough. But I myself, I was excited. Oh, uh, the, one of the richest men in the United States of America. He is richer than Donald Trump. Most, the, the most successful man among immigrants. I was about to report how joyfully how this much, but the Lord rebuked me. What do you do? You always raise funds from others and use it for others. But what do you do? So I did not make a report to, to her. Instead, as the Holy Spirit told me, I helped her. The first daughter graduate university for four years, providing all the tuition fees, dormitory fees, books, and uh, what even clothes, everything until she received RN certificate. Then I, the peace of God, love of God poured into my heart. And then from the, always when I pray, and somebody asked me to pray, then I prayed, Lord, this brother, this sister needs this, oh Lord, give or provide this to her. But I didn't do anything. But from the time I read this scripture, I decided to practice my love to my neighbor. I'm a professor. When I asked uh, my students to pray for uh, the, the, the give, give me uh, the, their prayer request, one of the students' uh, prayer request was laptop computer. So she asked for prayer for laptop computer. And we prayed how the Lord give this lady uh, the, the Miss Lee uh, computer. But while praying, the Lord told me, you have $1,000 in your pocket. Where would you use this? <laughs> in the past, I ignored. It's God's business. I just prayed for her. But I didn't know how to practice our love. So immediately after the class, in break time, I gave $1,000 to buy a computer. But in the past, I was so neglectful. So recently, I challenged my wife and my daughters, three daughters. One daughter is pharmacist, two daughters are lawyers. Their incomes are not small. I challenged them. We received much, but we didn't give enough. Why don't you make a foundation? In the beginning, we thought about the Parks Foundation, but later, whoever, in maybe, if anyone is interested in joining, may join us. So I formed the foundation and registered with the U.S. government as a nonprofit uh, charity foundation to give whenever I see needs. When I was here, one of the person who I, I love least, I do not like him. He does not work hard, but always ask help. But he asked me help. Dr. Park, I need $3,750 to pay my son's tuition. I have to pay in this week. I was reluctant. Because I do not, you know, I did not like him. I asked the Lord, Lord, what should I do? And I wrote an email to my wife, honey, what should I do? <laughs> I remember, I remember Henry Nowen's word. Henry Nowen said, I hope 
that my love for those whom I like will never lessen my love for those whom I do not. I hope that another person's love for me will never be a measure of my love for him or her. Now, I live on my salary, paying the bills and then housing, even operating car, and then I give my tithes. Sometimes I give it also more than that, but I decided. I cannot show my love to our neighbor. I cannot give to our people, neighbor, our neighbor in, in need, after I used everything what I needed to use. So I decided, no matter how much it may be, all the extra income, even honorariums and an extra teaching, you know, if I teach one more course in, at Fuller, then they'll give me about $3,000, then that's not mine. All extra income. If anyone gives me $10,000 to use, you know, for, for any purpose, then I will deposit. I deposit the money into this account. You know, to, not to make an excuse, I don't have money. So ever since I practiced this love to my neighbor, the joy I have, happiness our God gives me, is greater than before. I used all my resources for myself. Our love to our God must, have, must be demonstrated in our love to our neighbor. Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 36 read, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you are blessed, who are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invite me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Were thirsty and gave, give you something to drink? When did we see you, a stranger, and invite you in? Or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire separated for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I, need you, I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me they also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or needing clothes, or sick or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did not do for one of, these, one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. What does it mean to this? What does this mean? 
the Jesus after his resurrection appeared to his disciples. He asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? I love you, Lord. Feed my lamb. Peter, do you love me? I love you, Lord. Shepherd my sheep. Do you truly love me, Lord? I, you know that I love you. Then Jesus said, feed my lamb. Our love to our neighbor, our love, our love to God should be uh, shown hmm, as our love to our neighbor. Our duty to God cannot be excused to the negligence of our duty to our neighbors. Then steps on how to love our neighbor as ourselves. First, we must experience love of God. John chapter 15, verse 9 reads, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. Without experiencing God's love, we cannot truly really love our neighbor. So first, we need to experience love of God. How can we experience love of God? By obeying the word of God. He who has my commandment keeps them. He it is who loves me. He who loves me will be loved my father, and I love him, and I will manifest myself to him. So when we practice love of our neighbor, to our neighbor, then we'll experience God's love. We must love our, ourselves. Genesis chapter 1, verses, verse 31. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good, and there was evening and there was money. We need to know how to love ourselves. Without knowing you know, how to love ourselves, we cannot really love others. The Bible said, love your neighbor as yourself. The one who does not love himself or herself cannot love others. So, first, we need to experience love of God. Second, we must love ourselves. And third, we must accept our neighbor as they are. Romans chapter 15, verse 7 reads, Accept one another, then just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God, Christ accepted us as we are. But we love who we, who we love, you know, we love those who love us, who hate those who, who hate us. But the Bible tells us, accept one another. We are different. But if anyone think differently and behave differently, then we hate. We do not accept. But we have diff different gifts, different calling. We are different. We are unique. How can we be the same? We need to accept one another as they are. Huh? We need to accept our brethren, brothers and sisters, as they are, as God accepted them. We need to accept as they are. And for the love of God has to be poured out into heart by the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. Then practical tips on how to show our love to our neighbors. First, we need to pray for them. We need to pray for our neighbor. Second, provide the need of your neighbor. First John chapter 3, verses 17 and 18 read, If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need, but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. Third, give, yield, and sacrifice. First John chapter 3, verse 9, 16 says, This is how we know what the love is. Jesus Christ 
lay down in his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. Who says this? James. Who is James? According to Luke chapter 9, when Jesus about to pass through the Samaritan village, Samaritans came and blocked them. What did James say? Lord, do you want to bring fire from heaven and destroy them? Ha <laughs> ha. He was not man of love, but later he has he became a man of love. After he experienced the Lord's love, as written in John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will have eternal life, will not be perished but eternal life. He experienced the love, love of God. He abided in the love of God. He experienced the love of God. After he experienced the love of God, he became man of love. And he said, This is how we know what the love, what the love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. We experience God's salvation is what Christ did for us. Because of Christ's sacrifice, we are saved. But now, we, it's our turn. We need to pay back. So salvation is what God, Christ, did for us. What is discipleship? Discipleship is what we uh, pay to our God. For the coming of the kingdom of God. For the realization of the will of God. We need to sacrifice. We shall not try to make use of Christ's name or the expenses of Christ. We should not just seek our happiness. We, if we experience true love of God, we need to give, yield, and sacrifice. When there was conflict between Abraham and the Lord, Abraham said, choose. If you say right, I'll choose the left. If you choose left, I'll choose right. He did not talk about the fairness. He did not ask for fair division. One was like fertile, like Eden of Garden of Eden. One was barren. But he uh, yielded. He gave. He must increase, I must decrease. That's what uh, John the Baptist did. But as ministers of God and then missionaries, we compare ourselves with others. We talk about partnership in mission. But partnership in mission is not successful. Why? Always men of God, people of God want to take a reputation, glory, want to be at the center. Then they don't want to cooperate. But we are called of God. We experience God's love. We receive salvation freely. We need to practice. We need to have discipleship. We need to give, yield, and sacrifice for the sake of God, for the sake of the kingdom of God. Let us love our Lord with all my heart, all my soul. Also, let us practice our love to our neighbor. Let us not just love our neighbor in just the word. But in practice. So as we wrap up uh, this, uh, the Twelve Triennial Convention of Asian Missions Association, why don't we just take this word? The entire law is summed up in a single command: love your neighbor as yourself. So Great Commission, you know, doing missionary work, evangelist work is a means to achieve the goal. Our goal, our purpose is to love our God and our neighbor. You know, to help people love their God and then their neighbor, we preach, proclaim and teach. So our missionary work is all about to teach people Love their God and their neighbor as themselves. So we shall not 
do our missionary activities at the expense of, uh, you know, the love our neighbor as ourselves. May the Lord bless you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this time, for this uh, convention. Thank you for AMA. Lord, thank you for speaking to us this week. We learned much. Lord, as we depart, thank you for giving us this message. The entire law is summed up in a single command, love your neighbor as yourself. As you have loved us, we want to love our neighbors whom you truly love. Lord, help us to experience your love and to practice our brotherly love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>